Hello anatomy friends, we are going to get into the muscles of the leg and similar to what we had in the thigh, we have three compartments we're going to talk about and one of those compartments is so large that it's actually split into two. So we'll have an anterior compartment, a lateral compartment, and then a very large posterior compartment that will have a robust superficial portion and deep. So let's start with the anterior compartment of the leg. It is often referred to as the dorsiflexor or extensor compartment. And these muscles are going to be located anterior to the interosseous membrane. So recall that anterior or the interosseous membrane will be between the tibia and the fibula, the shafts or the bodies. And so all these muscles are going to be on the anterior side of that. Now one important thing to understand about the anterior compartment is that it is going to be surrounded by very dense, deep fascia. And all muscle compartments are going to be surrounded by deep fascia, but the, the fascia in this particular region is ex, it's, uh, notably dense. And so um, if you have fluid like blood entering into this region due to a fracture or something along those lines, this particular compartment is going to be more susceptible to what's referred to as compartment syndrome. And so what will happen as more blood enters into the region that will increase the pressure, it will, um, it will uh, compress the nerves and the arteries and the muscles in this region. It could lead to necrosis of the muscles or death. Um, of the muscles in these regions if not addressed immediately. So that is going to be an emergent situation. <clears throat> these muscles are going to pass and insert anterior to the transversely oriented axis of the ankle. And so because of that placement, it will allow these muscles to dorsiflex the ankle. Um, which means we're elevating those toes or the forefoot and depressing the heel. Those long extensors, so particularly these two muscles right here, are going to attach to the dorsal aspect of the digits, really um, kind of spreading out to create extensor expansions, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a moment. So they will play a role in terms of extending the digits or extending the toes. While we have spent the majority of our time uh, when we're talking about the muscles, talking about concentric contractions um, in this course, eccentric contractions of these muscles in particular are really just as important in proper functioning of locomotion. So let's start with the tibialis anterior, often referred to as TA. Sometimes you'll even hear it referred to as the anterior tibialis muscle. These, this is going to be the most medial, so this is your TA right here, most medial and superficial muscle of this compartment. It's usually the most prominent muscle of this compartment. And it really has the mechanical advantage for strong dorsiflexion. So the strong dorsiflexor, also its tendon does not extend to the digits, so it doesn't play a role in terms of extension. It will also play a role in terms of inversion of the ankle, just due to its placement or its tendon placement. And that brings up the um, kind of the thing that always helps me remember, tibialis muscles will always be the inverters. <clears throat> so if it has a tibialis in its name, you know that it's gonna be an inverter. If it has a fibularis in its name, which is on the more lateral side, those will be the everters. So you actually have one muscle in this anterior compartment that will play a role in eversion whereas the tibialis anterior will play a role in inversion. Oftentimes you can have little microtraumas associated with the tibialis anterior, meaning little tears to this muscle. And these tears can actually lead to periosteal damage as well. And that's where you get what's referred to as shin splints. So that can cause swelling or edema and pain in this region, particularly in the more distal portions of the tibia. The extensor digitorum longus is going to be the more lateral muscle of this compartment. And um, it is each one of its tendons will extend down to the digits two through five, and it will create what's called the extensor expansions. We had something similar on the digits of the hand, and it will allow for extension of those digits two through five. 
whereas one will be covered by the extensor hallucis longus. We had the pollicis when we were talking about the, the thumb region, well, as hallucis when we're talking about the big toe or great toe region. So very similar in terms of um, what it does, but just in terms of the first digit. And it's usually quite difficult to see the hallucis longus in um, terms of its muscle belly because it is going to be deep to these other muscles. And lastly, you have the fibularis tertius. Um, it does not belong in the lateral compartment like the other fibularis muscles. It's actually just a, um, it's really only a separated part of the extensor digitorum longus. Um, so it's going to be wrapped up in the fascia associated with the anterior compartment. And like we mentioned, it will play a role in terms of eversion of the, uh, the foot. All right, moving to the lateral compartment, um, this is the smallest of the compartments of the leg. It is often referred to as the everter compartment because really the, the major role of these two muscles, the fibularis longus, which is the one we can identify, but you can also see the fibularis brevis. You can identify this one as well. It's just a little bit harder um, when we're talking about the laboratory component. So these will evert the foot. They will also play a role in a very um, small role in terms of plantar flexion of the foot. Oh, and I forgot to mention something on this particular slide. Let's go back. We can't forget innervation. Um, so the anterior compartment is going to be innervated by the deep fibular nerve. So we're kind of, remember the sciatic nerve is going to divide into the tibial division, which is mostly those posterior compartments and the common fibular are going to be the two major divisions of the sciatic nerve. The common fibular will further divide into a deep fibular, which is going to innervate this anterior compartment, as well as the um, superficial fibular. And so, um, so when we're talking about um, this anterior compartment, we're talking the deep fibular, whereas for this lateral compartment, it is the superficial fibular nerve. If you have damage to this deep fibular nerve, you can have what is, um, what's referred to as foot drop. And what happens is if you have a lesion on the deep fibular nerve, this results in the inability to dorsiflex the foot. It kind of makes the foot too long. You can't kind of uh, clear the ground when you're trying to step. And so that's what's referred to as foot drop. So that would be a lesion of this deep fibular. All right, so lateral compartment, as I mentioned, is going to be the fibularis longus and the fibularis brevis. Um, fibularis longus tendon, if you can kind of see here, it shows it as a muscle belly. Um, the tendon will kind of extend down to this fifth metatarsal region over here. It's going, the, the tendon here will be palpable and actually observable on that proximal and posterior portion of the lateral malalis. So here's that lateral malalis of the fibula. And so you can actually feel that tendon right there. The posterior compartment is the largest of the leg compartments. It's actually so large that it's sub subdivided into a superficial and deep part. And the superficial part is by far the, the most dominant, the strongest portion it is going to um, have the two muscles, the gastronemius and the soleus muscles, that are playing the largest role in terms of plantar flexion of the ankle. Plantar flexion is a very powerful movement. It's four times stronger than dorsiflexion, as you might can just kind of test on yourself. And it's really used to propel the body forward or kind of push off um, portion of locomotion. So um, the, the superficial muscles or the superficial parts of the posterior compartment, as I mentioned, will be um, made of the gastronemius and the soleus muscles. These two muscles will actually have a combined tendon with the small plantaris muscle called the calcaneal tendon, but you have probably heard it referred to as the Achilles tendon. And this is the, the largest um, thickest, strongest tendon in the body. It, they are going to, as mentioned, they will share this common tendon, but the gastronemius and the soleus muscles actually can act independently. Um, you may have heard the kind of mnemonic or kind of phrase to help 
understand the difference between these two muscles actions. So you can stroll with soleus. So not as powerful a movement, or it's a very powerful movement, but kind of more of a workhorse type of movement. So you can stroll with soleus, but win the long jump with gastrocnemius. So gastrocnemius is for that kind of really powerful, strong contraction for those um, quicker movements, whereas a longer, um, a longer, more workhorse type of plantar flexion would be the soleus muscle. <clears throat> that cal um, that calcaneus is, and the size of the, the calcaneal tendon as well as the gastrocnemius and the soleus are really just directly proportional to our bipedal stance. So the fact that these are so large is because of that bipedal stance. You can see here the gastrocnemius has two heads. They actually will cross the knee joint. So you can, it does, gastrocnemius can play a role in terms of flexion of the knee. Soleus does not cross the knee. It is a much flatter muscle. It's actually named after uh, the sole fish, which is a really flat type fish. And you can actually see a bit of the soleus on either side, the medial and lateral side of this region. And you can see this very large, very prominent calcaneal tendon. The deep posterior compartment of the leg is going to be made up of muscles that will play a role in terms of plantar flexion, but um, only about 7% of the total force of plantar flexion comes from these deep muscles of the posterior compartment and the fibularis muscles in the lateral compartment. So that tells you how important that superficial compartment is um, for plantar flexion. So if you have a calcaneal tendon rupture, these muscles in this particular compartment or those fibularis muscles in the lateral compartment cannot generate the power necessary to really lift the body's weight. Um, so uh, plantar flexion is going to be one of the roles of this deep compartment. You do have a tibialis posterior here. It will play a role in terms of inversion of the foot because it is a tibialis muscle. And then you will also have flexion of the digits. So you have a flexor digitorum longus and a flexor hallucis longus. So these would be two through five. And this would be one in terms of the digits that they will flex. And you do have a muscle up here um, that is within the sheath of the posterior, deep posterior compartment called the um, popliteus, and that can play a role in terms of flexion of the knee. Both of these compartments, the deep and the superficial, will be innervated by the tibial nerve because we know that tibial nerve equals posterior compartments when we're talking about the lower limb. Okay, question. Damage to the superficial fibular nerve could most greatly affect which action? Would it be dorsiflexion, eversion, extension of toes, um, inversion of foot, or plantar flexion of ankle? Okay, so for me, when I'm working through this, so I, I know that there's damage to the superficial fibular nerve, so I want to think about what compartment does that innervate? Well, we know the deep compartment, or excuse me, the, the posterior compartments are going to be the tibial nerve. So it's not posterior compartments of the leg. And we know that the anterior compartment is innervated by the deep fibular nerve. So that's not it either. So that only leaves the lateral compartment. And we remember the lateral compartment is going to be composed of the fibularis longus and brevis. Fibularis equals eversion. So eversion is the correct answer here. Dorsiflexion would be more affected by a deep fibular, um, a deep fibular injury. So recall we were talking about the foot drop. Extension would be more deep fibular as well. Inversion, there is um, in, inversion would be any of the tibialis muscles. So you do have one in the deep posterior compartment, as well as the anterior compartment. And then plantar flexion would be tibial in terms of its major role. Now we do know that the superficial fibular nerve in the lateral compartment, that lateral compartment does play a role in terms of plantar flexion, but as we talked about, not as significant a role. So really it's that tibial nerve that would have the, the biggest issues. 
We also recall that in the anterior compartment, we do have the fibularis tertius, and that does play a role in terms of eversion. And that anterior compartment is innervated by the deep fibular. So that could play a small role in terms of eversion and allowing some of it. But if you're knocking out both of the fibularis longus and brevis, um, you would likely notice some type of disruption to the full range of motion of eversion. Okay, excellent. We have one video left in terms of uh, our lecture component of the musculoskeletal system, and so we are finishing off our discussion with the muscles of the foot. Thank you for your time and attention here. Always reach out if you have any questions early and often, and I uh, thank you for, um, for your attention, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.